Reggae interviews. Word sound power. This is DJ745 here with a rising star, Kalia. She's been creating waves in music since around 2016, really showcasing her versatility in music and songwriting. She's already been featured on a Grammy-nominated project in 2023, a year that saw the release of her debut EP, Stay True. It all seems to be happening right now. How are we doing today, Kalia? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us some time and space because I know that you're very, very busy at the moment. So it's a real honour to sit down with you and really learn a little, little bit about your achievements in life and in music as well in what I would class as a relatively short space of time. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you for, you know, having this platform to showcase artists. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Let's reflect back on the past 12 months. Um, I feel that so much has happened in the last 12 months that, you know, when you sort of look back yourself, how do you reflect on that time period in your life? Uh, I would say it's been a, working on my EP, it's been a labour of love. For me, it's actually been two years um, since, you know, deciding that I wanted to put out the project to it reaching the ears of the public yeah so um you know it's been a lot of work um not just on the music but on how like i wanted visuals to look and lots of stuff behind the scenes but it's been uh a journey a journey is what i can say (laughs) but a good journey though hasn't it of course the journey is always the best part you know i have to remind myself of that um that it's not so much about the destination we can get caught up so much in Mm. all i need to put this out and then when it's out when we're not like satisfied anyway so at least we need to enjoy the journey because that's what it's about yeah embracing the the process rather than just trying to get to the end goal exactly exactly i mean reggae interviews always loves to talk to artists young and old we love to talk to the veterans we love to talk to up and coming artists as well and really this platform is really for our viewers to get to know a little bit about kalia now we definitely notice a bit of a british twang in your accent don't we yeah that's true (laughs) i did i migrated to london when i was about six but i was born in jamaica um and i ended up coming back to jamaica to pursue music professionally so it's like been a full circle moment for me okay yeah so growing up you grew up in westmoreland on the western side of jamaica um what are your memories of living in westmoreland as a child uh definitely a lot of playing outside with my cousins and my grandma had 13 children um and those children had many other children so you can imagine i had a big family and i had loads of um i was the only child for my mother at the time but i had loads of cousins and stuff like that you know we would have showers in the rain and um walk through hills to get to church to get to school so yeah it was it was a good life life. yeah 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 and then from the western side of jamaica you um, emigrated over to the west side of london in the uk before then making the east side your home yes yeah 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 Yeah, so i was um we first settled in uxbridge for a little bit and then we moved over to east london um and i've lived in various places in east london but yeah like stratford um went to school in stratford okay uh yeah so east west from the west West. to the east (laughs) (laughs) as a child though that must have been a bit of a culture shock coming from the tropics of jamaica to London yeah definitely but I was excited um my mum never actually told me that we were um migrating she was just oh we're going on a holiday but something inside me knew because every time a family member would go they never came back right. <laughs> so I was yeah. like I feel like we are not gonna <laughs> return um so I had it in my brain and the one thing that stuck out to me I would say was the education um in Jamaica we take education so seriously um you have you know even from primary school you want to be the first in your class or at least top 10 and moving to the UK we didn't have any of that and I realized okay like people are not the kids are not taking education, education. so seriously they're like quite rude to the t- well what I would have considered rude because I'm coming from like you know stern teachers so that would that was the biggest shock for me but living in London you know say so Jamaican they everywhere so True apart from that it never really feels so different different yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) and then um you know you resided in the uk for a number of years and i think that you were sort of like making some sort of like inroads into music back then Mm -hmm. when did that first sort of inspiration to come whilst you're in london to say i want to explore music as a profession 
I always wanted to. Um, I can't remember wanting to do anything else, uh, but I never knew how or I never stepped foot into a studio until uh, there's a company called Urban Development, uh, which I found out the other day. My friend actually um, does projects with them now, which is like we're all growing up. It's weird. But wow. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was like, you know, 14, 15, they would do these projects where you would um, build a record label and you would put on a show. So whatever you wanted to do, if you wanted to be an artist, if you wanted to do management, marketing, you had your own mentor group for that. And then we all came together and put on a big show at the end of the project. And that was my first time going into the studio and realizing, OK, this is how the music industry works. This is how you know, I'm going to have to work with producers, I'm going to have to get a manager and understanding what it actually took to make my dreams a reality. reality. So yeah, man, big up urban development each and every time because them are the first people who make me go in a studio. studio. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess that, you know, the, the musical influences, which I think are, all, you know, to an extent reflected in the music that you make yourself, are a melting pot of Jamaica, but also holy pastels from the UK yes, as well. Definitely. Um, growing up, my family are Seven Day Adventists, so in the house, not now play unless I gospel. Okay. So I found music myself. So it me it meant I was listening to so many genres, you know, R and B, reggae, dancehall, pop, rock, hip hop, um, grime. So yeah, my brain now is just like. Only patins just Only mash things. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are there are there any sort of like artists or groups that sort of like you know sort of stick out in your mind as we're talking now when you sort of reflect back on your youth that you know groups or artists that really had an influence on you? Uh, I'd say definitely Destiny's Child, um, Lady Saw, okay. uh, Rihanna. Rihanna, I would say, was the first time I saw myself in another artist in terms of she you know she came from uh the islands and she made it big uh mainstream yes. so that was really inspirational for me um yeah but holy part i can't even think right now there's so, so many other artists <laughs> too too many names going through your head i guess yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay you resided in london for a number of years you mm -hmm. sort of made some inroads into music there and then you decided to come back to jamaica around about 2016 2017 yeah. 2017 17. yeah yeah because yeah. um i had made a conscious decision that i wanted to focus on creating dancehall and reggae music uh before that i was recording mostly r&b and then i kind of headed into that realm but i felt like i needed to be here to feel the real inspiration for work with a real um not to say sorry not to say anybody outside of jamaica is not real but there's a different energy that you get when you are in jamaica, jamaica. you know so um i made a decision that i wanted to do that um and on my way to jamaica i stopped in miami it was my friend's birthday um and i spotted shaggy and i decided to just go up to him you know and ask him if i could send him some music he gave me an email which i really thought was fake um but big off shaggy so he's another integral like person Bro. yeah in in my career right now because um he then introduced me to tony kelly because i said i was coming down to jamaica and um he gave me tony's number and yeah the rest is history, history. yeah i'm just going to rewind back here you just said to me that i'm sort of flying over to jamaica i stopped in miami and i just walked up to shaggy yeah. and introduced myself that's not what most people do you know <laughs> <laughs> i know but you know like sometimes i think of it and i'm like that's so lucky but i also think i did manifest it like when i say i packed my i had a, two big suitcases i did not have a return ticket from jamaica um to come back i didn't know when i was going to come back i didn't even have a place to stay because i was like i don't know if i'm going to be in montego bay or kingston or i just was like going as i was there so um when i saw him i was like this is my chance what am i going to do not how often am, when am I gonna see him again I don't know <laughs> you know so what do I have he can just say no or get out of my face which he didn't so no, no. <laughs> yeah. okay so you send that email and then Tony Kelly got back in touch with you and then as you said the rest is history but you know you are actually the first signed artist to Tony Kelly's record label Kalicious Records that's a big move yeah for sure uh, I remember coming here and um, he I expected for us to listen to the music that I had sent to Shaggy together, but uh, we ended up recording a song on the spot. So I feel like, I don't know, maybe he was like testing me or something. And we ended up um, recording like every day for two weeks before I went back to the UK and um, decided to come back and actually, you know, do it properly. So do it properly, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, one of the earliest singles I remember from Kalia and Tony Kelly was on the 20th anniversary of the bookshelf for them in 2018, My Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, another, like, surreal moment growing up listening to that rhythm, all the songs on that rhythm being, you know, a part of my uh, upbringing, let's yep. say. Um, and then to be doing the anniversary uh, kind of mix of it was was it definitely special. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did you have any sort of like reservations about jumping on that rhythm? Because, you know, that rhythm, the bookshelf, is definitely a 90s dancehall classic rhythm with, yeah, yeah. you know, people like Beanie and Sean Paul, Tanya, Vegas. Did you have any sort of reservations within you or was it just a case of, no, actually, I'm here, I'm going to do this? So I had done um, this mashup that I would usually perform that had a few songs from the bookshelf rhythm. So I was doing that before and... Um, when Tony was like, oh, you know, it's the anniversary, we should revamp it. I did I, I did feel pressure because it's like, okay, you're coming with something new, so mm. this better be good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I felt more pressure than reservations, you know. I yeah. was excited, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, nobody I could say, oh, what is, yeah. True, true. <laughs> well, you know, I think, the, you know, definitely the world definitely took notice of that single. And I guess that, you know, working with somebody like Tony Kelly, he's always been at the forefront of music almost experimental in some of his beats and things mm. but you know he's got what close to 40 years experience starting out in tough gong so you're in great company working with him yeah definitely for sure and i, I feel um honored um you know that he believes in my project and believes in my talent and stuff to push to the level that he is so yeah i'm, I'm happy to to be here, to be here yeah. yeah and i guess that you know going back to you know some of your musical influences and his production style sort of like almost like fused together really well because your music has got influences of dancehall, reggae, yeah, R&B yeah. and gospel. And I think that, you know, to some extent, you know, Tony Kelly's productions over the years have almost sort of like, you know, sort of like, it might be a dancehall rhythm, but there's going to be an element of something else in it as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. And um, he's a producer that grows. I mean, right now he's doing um, mainly reggae stuff um, when, he's, when we're working together. Um, so it's definitely, he's somebody that can you know what's the word i'm looking for uh change when necessary and not be like stuck to one thing, one thing. and 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 grow let's say you know so it's it is fun to to work with to him work with him yeah. yeah yeah well look let's home in on this new ep it's a seven track ep called stay true um you've obviously been making music together for a number of years is all of the album ep produced by tony kelly uh so we have productions on there from troy mclean um, he co-produced a track with Lionel Della O and I feel like I'm forgetting one other person. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's quite early for me. But yeah, he did executive produce the EP. Yeah. yeah. And um, in terms of, you know, some of the musicians, the studios where, you know, the voicing things were done, give our viewers a bit of an insight into that process. Uh, into creating the, yeah. So as I said, for the EP it was two years in the making um, and I it took me some time to decide on the concept what I wanted it to be but we had like so many songs that we had recorded and some songs that were recorded like months before it being released um, so yeah it was uh how can I say it was lo lots of different things going into it you know Shaggy being on the EP was something that was a necessary um thing for me to do because it was going full circle going full circle yeah. again and it's my first body of work so that was important for me to have him on there uh, Mortimer being on there is someone that I've always wanted to work with but uh, Tings and Times was actually the last song that was written and wow. I like pushed for it to be on the EP and pushed for, for Mortimer to be on there so yeah some of the things were like long time planned and then others were just like you know spontaneous yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I think that, you know, the the album sort of, sorry, the EP has got so many mixes of different elements. There's reality lyrics, there's lovers rock, there's dancehall, all the things that you do so great. What about the story of Lisa and Johnny? <laughs> so that song, um, I would say I wrote that from hearing experiences from the outside, you know, so although they, although um, they may be fictional characters. These are real stories that happen sadly to people um, And so I wanted to kind of showcase that I, I don't think I've ever written a song about, you know 
trust and betrayal mm. or anything like that but the ep stay true um is not just about me staying true to myself but also staying true to the different emotions that i may have and i know that the kind of music that i was putting out before um like easy no better day they all had like very similar uh concepts very similar themes and obviously as a person i have more things to talk to about talk so about. i wanted to stay true to the many emotions or the many thoughts that i may have, have yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and then you know um we've got other sides of the ep with songs like didn't i waiting mm -hmm. on you as well so as i said it's a really well packaged together ep thank you thank you very much you. um there's a record label that's also associated with this release, Ineffable Records. Give our viewers a bit of an insight into the connection between Kalicious and Ineffable. That was another spawn. I don't know, my life has... <laughs> it's like, I don't really um, plan anything, but I do. Like, I know I want these things and the universe just um attracts but so um ineffable adam had contacted us because um they wanted me to be a part of the uh cali roots within for 2023 and uh they sent me the beat i loved it and i think someone was speaking to tony about uh ineffable before and mm. so it was kind of like a a tight a great timing situation um and so yeah we did uh, partnered uh, for them to uh, release the EP. The EP. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just mentioned the Cali Roots. This is the rhythm that we spoke about at the beginning where you are on this Grammy nominated project. Um, what a big project that has been, the Cali Roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was honored already to, you know, be a part of it and to be asked to be a part of it. And um, for it to then be Gram Grammy nominated and also be the first rhythm to be, to nominated, be nominated for a Grammy that's pretty big as well so yeah I feel I feel special to be a part of it yeah. for sure yeah. mm -hmm. and I think that you know a lot of people were taken by surprise because when the um, the final shortlist of the five Grammy nominees was announced everyone was sort of looking at the artist names and then Cali Roots it's like hold on this has never happened before yeah 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 like it's a rhythm yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it was it's ex it's been an exciting um exciting time Times. yeah 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 i mean you know it, it almost feels just like talking to you that you almost like manifest what you want to happen in your life you know just from what you're sort of saying to me today um let's talk about some of the other collabs that you've done over the years you know um silly walks connection for flowers what a big song that has yeah, been yeah, yeah um, i think it has over a million streams now on spotify as does high which is on the cali roots with him um they contacted me they wanted to um do a reggae remix and they figured that my voice would be you know a good fit for it i love the song already anyway so i was like of course they were in jamaica i think they contacted me let's say um, a tuesday and by sunday we had the songs re recorded and had the video recorded as wow. well so it was really quick really quick yeah yeah yeah. but yeah big up silly walks because you know you, you them really love the music um they made sure to have the best musicians um on it uh to to do the production and it was actually all live recorded so yeah 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 and one thing that i realized recently look going through social media is that this year actually celebrates 10 years of the honeypot rhythm that they put out with chronic smile jamaica and jan nine and everything so what an achievement that is yeah 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 definitely man um as i said them them really love the music um you can see uh, that they it's a passion for them you mm. know so yeah man big up city big walks, up city walks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um going back to the ep there's a collaboration that i want to talk to you about with an icon a dancer like on tanya stevens yeah, yeah. no answer what what was it like working with tanya stevens because you know i think that she she's an artist that you know really i think is straight to the point she says what she what's on her mind doesn't mess around you must have had some great fun vibing that song with her definitely and i always say you know she is inspiring to me not just as an artist but as a person That's for the reasons that you've just said she no business she will speak our mind <laughs> and i love that because being um you know a woman in the industry sometimes it's hard to voice your opinions and say how you really feel because you know want the backlash you know want to say you know that so um yeah that's somebody that i've uh look up to not mm. just in her artistry but as a, as a person so being able to work with her on the ep uh was uh special definitely definitely yeah now the rhythm track for that is a very very well-known foundation rhythm track in the history of jamaican music the answer rhythm how did it feel to be sort of be going on to that rhythm it felt powerful you know because 
it again is something that I've it's nostalgic for me um, and then to be able to put those kinds of lyrics on you know with the swing on on the answer with him uh, yeah man definitely definitely powerful because mm-hmm. I think one of the things I sort of feel as a lover of reggae and Jamaican music is that I sometimes feel that you know do our younger artists do these foundation rhythms really resonate with them that they actually want to record on them I would say so uh, for me I, I speak for myself 100% because it's the the nostalgic feeling of it but also it gives you chills because it's like when you were listening to it as a child you didn't well i didn't think oh one day i'm gonna be on this you know you never saw i never saw that for myself and so for it to happen it's like whoa like really i put a sang panda rhythm yeah, yeah. really i put a sang panda bookshelf rhythm yeah. and it's not a rhythm where you know it has been inspired by by the bookshelf rhythm produced by another producer you know it's produced by the man himself so yeah man when them thing that happen it definitely feels good mm. Mm. okay now that's interesting in terms of like your musical journey today what would you say has been the hardest part for you Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> the hardest part of my musical journey. Hmm. <laughs> Any challenges, obstacles that you've sort of like, you know, had to overcome along the way? Because, you know, I'm sure that for somebody that sort of moved from London to Jamaica, it's, I don't know, it's perhaps, is it the easiest sort of like, you know, sort of circle to start working in when you first came to Jamaica? You know, I don't know. To be honest, I will say, um, (laughs) moving out here and releasing my first single is when I've, I think I first realised that everybody is not going to like you, Kalia. Like, not everybody likes you. Like, when you're, before you release, like, music on a certain level, you know, you I don't know what it is, but you just believe like, oh, you know, everyone's going to love everyone's going to love yeah. this because I love it. And no, not everyone's going to like your music. But I wouldn't say that was a challenge for me. I have thick skin, you know, I have a big family. Uh, we're Jamaican. So, you know, so we, we, we basically bully each other. So <laughs> I don't have I don't have issues with like, you know, people saying um, bad stuff about me or whatever. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think one of the challenges for me, uh, that I can think of now is social media, um, navigating that and the changes, like things are always changing and then you, you kind of like you've, it's another job basically. Whereas before when I was growing up, social media was fun. You would just share things with your friends and now it's like, oh, I have to post this or I have to, you know, keep people updated, Put a story, that kind of make thing. Make a reel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. like, I just want to make music. <laughs> <laughs> but I was talking to someone a few days ago and they were saying that, you know, social media has now actually become the promotional platform. So, you know, back in the day, you'd send music out as promotional copies to radios and so forth which i guess you still are doing Mm -hmm. but then another element of promotion is now social media because if they if people are not seeing you on social media they're not gonna hear your music yeah it's like well it's that's the thing so social media is it it has its ups but it has its downs and one of the good things about it is the direct to consumer situation that the artist has um you know we're able to go into a fan's DMs and say, hey, download this or listen to this and, Mm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, I would say without social media, I wouldn't have gained uh, so many fans in places like Latin America or um, in Africa so quickly. Yes. uh, Because they were my biggest fan base for a while before even Jamaica Jamaica. started listening to me, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's... uh, so we have it's a love hate relationship (laughs) (laughs) i know exactly what you mean i know exactly what you mean okay looking to the future i know that this year we're going to see kali on the road aren't we i know that we've got some dates already announced for festivals like summer jam what else is in store for kalia for 2024 uh i'll be putting out more music i'm also working on my debut album which is exciting um and of course more shows so yeah man just follow the thing and whenever i have confirmed news i will post it on social media i guess <laughs> on social media <laughs> exactly <laughs> well look clear i really give thanks for you um giving us some of your time today to sort of share a bit about your musical journey and thank you for doing what you've done today for our viewers so we give thanks for your time today one love no problem thanks for having me and as i say big up for the platform and for doing your thing because it's much appreciated blessings enough respect reggae interviews word sound power 